How to create an emergency fund. It's an essential part of any good financial strategy. An emergency fund is a requirement. Consider it as a life shock absorber that will prevent you from adding to the amount of debt you most certainly already carry. A huge spotlight has been placed on the importance of having an emergency fund when a crisis strikes because to the coronavirus outbreak. What's required? While some consider having one to two months worth of salary set aside ideal, the majority of financial experts agree that the emergency fund size should be sufficient to cover three to six months worth of living expenses. That's a terrific notion and an important component of any smart financial plan, but it also takes work to implement. Knowing your monthly spending is the first step in the approach. The average yearly expenditure per consumer unit, which is comparable to a household, according to consumer expenditure statistics issued in April 2019 by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, was $60,060 in 2017. Even if your home expenses are more or lower than the national average, three months' worth of expenses is a significant sum of money. The typical person's first thought upon seeing that amount is, I can't come up with that kind of money. Why is so much money required? It is true that a substantial sum of money is needed to create an appropriate emergency fund, but we live in unpredictable times with uncertain economies, particularly in the wake of the coronavirus. Corporate loyalty is a thing of the past, and job loss can occur suddenly, often when it's least expected. There is never a good moment for crises to occur, such as sudden illness or disability, significant auto repairs, or the need for a new roof, which can be pricey even in the absence of a worldwide crisis. Everything is relative, even though it's probably true that you don't have an extra $15,000 laying around. The amount you will need to save for retirement is significantly smaller than even six months worth of costs, and there isn't a shrewd investor in the world who objects to the idea of saving so much money that they will never have to work again. Three months' expenses don't seem like much when compared to what you'll require over the period of 20 or 30 years in retirement. Analyzing the data. Let's think at how to set aside money for an emergency fund with that viewpoint in mind. Use the same approach to this endeavor as you would any other financial goal. Make a plan and carry it out. Finding out how much money you spend each month is the first step. The expenses that take up the majority of your money are likely to be those related to housing, transportation, and food. According to the BLS Consumer Expenditures Report, the typical household spends 62% of its income, or an average of $73,573, before taxes, on these products. Once you get the sum of your monthly spending, multiply it by 3. Your initial objective will be to hit that figure. You need to start saving money if you want to hit your three-month goal. Implementing your plan. Downgrading your cell phone plan and purchasing a less expensive car the next time you go car shopping are two simple methods to free up some cash for your savings strategy. You can also build to your emergency fund by skipping that two-week vacation, reducing your dining out expenses, and setting aside your upcoming raise or bonus. The secret is to consistently add to the money. Ideally, you should handle it the same way you would any other monthly reoccurring obligation. Save away the right amount of money from your paycheck. Most people have no problem sending credit card companies massive amounts of money on a monthly basis, but they object to the thought of paying themselves first. Adjust the equation. There is never a better moment to start saving if you are one of the many investors who don't have a rainy day fund set up in case of emergencies. Even if you lack the courage to start a focused savings program to tackle the project, you can start small. At the end of the day, take your change out of your pockets and place it in a jar. Check out micro-investing websites like Acorns that round up purchases made from connected accounts, collect the change, and then invest it. Alternatively, you might tip yourself by putting some money into your emergency fund while eating at home rather than going out to dinner. Put your newly acquired cash into your fund if you receive cash back on your credit cards or have recently paid off a significant debt, such as a personal loan or an automobile. Put any tax refund you get into your fund by depositing the check. You can accumulate $1,825 by the end of the year if you can manage to put just $5 every day into your endeavor, that's $9,125 in just 5 years. What to do with the money? Your emergency fund should be kept in money market funds and high-interest savings accounts, respectively. You require liquid, secure choices so that you may access your money when you need it. 
These options make it more difficult for you to access it, and you'll also get a small return on your investment. In conclusion, think of your emergency savings as an insurance plan. After you have it, be sure to keep it safe. It's not a piggy bank. You shouldn't use it for unplanned costs. In fact, as your income increases, make sure to increase the amount to reflect your current circumstances. When you do need to use the fund, only do so in an emergency and be careful with how you use it. Keep in mind that replacing that money always takes considerably longer than expected once it has been spent. Save as much as you can today, even if it's not much. You have a higher chance of surviving a disaster if you have an emergency fund than if you pile up credit card debt or take out a personal loan.